Hi there, welcome to Hudson Piano Studio. This is Mr. D, Derek here. I hope you're having a great day. When my wife, Aubrey, and I moved to Tampa about six years ago, we started looking around for the house that we wanted to live in long term. And one really important factor to us was that we lived within close distance to the school that our kids were going to go to. We didn't have kids yet, but we knew that we were going to. And so we found a great house um, within walking distance of an elementary school. Uh, we started noticing that a lot of the families that lived in the neighborhood would walk their kids to school and it would take them about 20 minutes or so to walk there. Um, another group of families we noticed had golf carts and with this golf cart, they automatically cut their commute time to school from about 20 minutes down to five minutes. It was the same path, it was the same journey but they cut their commute time down just by their method of transportation. When we have piano practice at home, this cuts our method of transportation to our final goal of being an accomplished piano player from 20 minutes down to five minutes. So today I wanna to talk to you about four tips for successful home practice. We're gonna talk about this because everyone wants to get to the goal of being an accomplished piano player, but if kids only practice during their lesson time or maybe one or two times, it's similar to them walking to school. Will they get there eventually? Yes. Will it take longer? Yes. So um, home practice is super important because it is the way the kids progress quickly to get where they're going to go and they can have a five minute commute instead of a 20 minute commute. So let's talk quickly, um, four tips for successful home practice that you as parents can apply today. The first thing we're gonna talk about today is setting the stage in your home for successful home practice. Three quick things we're gonna notice. Um, when you have a piano at your house, make sure that the piano is easily accessible. This applies especially if you have a keyboard at your home, especially one that can be put away. What we want is a piano that is visible, something that is in kind of the, the main thoroughfare of the house. Maybe it's in the living room, maybe it's in a playroom. Um, we wanna have the piano visible so that it's easily accessible, it's not hard to get to, it's something that kids can kind of sit down and practice quickly um, when they do that. And so make sure your piano is accessible. If you have an acoustic piano, put it in a place that you see and that you pass by often. The second thing is keep assigned pieces open and visible. So I give kids assignments every week. Uh, there are usually two or three books that they have and there's usually a song or two that's assigned from each book. So a quick tip is to just make sure those books are open to the assigned spot. A lot of times I'll give kids an assignment book and write down what they need to do that week. And so if you keep those pieces right in front of them open, that means that they walk by and they see the piece uh, and they'll think, hey, I need to practice that. Um, you can also use like little post-it notes and mark the pages um, that are due. And so that way kids know, hey, I need to practice this. It's open, it's visible, it's right there. Um, the third idea in setting the stage is to review music quickly after the lesson. So when I go through music with, with the kids or with my students, usually if you can have them review that music within 24 hours, don't let a lot of time pass before they actually review it. Ideally, it could happen in the same day within you know, two to four hours of the lesson. If they can sit down and just go over the music that we did in lesson, a lot of times that will solidify in their brain what they need to practice um, in, the, in the coming days before their next lesson. So make sure that you set the stage and that it is, uh, these three things are happening. The second thing is to know the cue, knowing your cue. So this is really important. Um, for people to say, hey, I, we let a whole week practice and just got busy uh, and didn't really make the time to practice. So here's my suggestion. Tie piano practice to something that is already a habit. We all eat every day. We tend to eat dinner um, at night. And so maybe you can tie your piano practice to the same thing every day. So maybe you're prepping dinner and you as a family um, have about 15 to 30, 40 minutes while that's happening. Maybe while you as a parent are 
prepping dinner, you could have your kids every time at that day, at that time of day, go in and practice their piano. Maybe they're early birds and they get up, maybe they could do it before school started um, and they could practice during that time. But think of a set time, practice at the same time every day so that it's a routine that your kids get used to. It's similar to brushing their teeth or doing something that's a routine. The more we set it in stone and do it the same way every day, then that, that lets the routine flow. And the cue would be, hey, every time I cook dinner, you're gonna go in there and you're gonna practice your piano for 15 minutes. So that's knowing your cue, number two. Number three is actually making music. So we've set the stage, number one. Um, we've knowing the cue to get ready to practice the piano. The third thing is actually making music. So let's talk about some ideas here. Involve yourself in your students' music. Even if you are not a musical parent, even if you know nothing about piano yourself, you can still be involved in your students' music. One thing that you can do is ask your student to hear a completed song. So often in lessons, they will have a song that they finish uh, and they, they check that song off and they move on to the next song go ahead and ask them, hey, can I hear a song that you've completed recently? It gives them a good review of that song. Maybe it's one they learned a month ago, and it's a good review to go back into that song and play it again. So ask them to hear a completed song, and then ask them also to hear an assigned song. Every student has a song that they're currently working on. So that'd be great for you to say, hey, let me hear what you've assigned this week. You don't have to know anything about music to ask them that, and then they can play that for you. The third thing is to be present and encouraging in the process of learning and growing. So maybe you hear them and they're struggling with a part. You can just say, hey, that was, that's a great attempt. Thanks for working on that. And just be involved in the learning process. So maybe they're struggling with a part and you can say, hey, let's, let me hear what you're doing with that. Let me help you learn and grow. But be involved in the process. All right, the last thing we're gonna talk about is taking a bow. And so, we know that piano is a long journey. It's not something that you learn in just a week, but it's ideally uh, a student has a long path that they can learn and become proficient at piano. And so the idea is that um, if every completed song automatically leads to a new song, and that's the same process over and over and over and over, and there's no milestone or landmark, a student becomes deflated because there's no marker or no sense of celebration. And so what we wanna do is have small celebrations along the way as they learn. It would be like them taking karate and maybe they got that white belt and then they moved on to the yellow belt. But if there was no moment to ever pause and say, hey, great job, you earned that yellow belt. Now we're gonna move on to say the orange belt. Um, so in piano, uh, I try to do this every week. Um, every time a student will finish a song, I'll offer them things like a sticker or an eraser or a small candy, something like that, just to give them small celebrations. Every time a student finishes a book, that's kind of a medium milestone that we do. And I have a prize box that I let them pick something out of. So if you as a parent will join me in that process of celebrating those small celebrations by maybe you can get creative and say if you finish this the book that you're working through if you finish that by let's say the end of next month then i will take you out for ice cream and just you and i can go out and we'll celebrate that so that's part of um, the journey of piano I celebrate some of the steps and some of the milestones that they do so the four things we're setting the stage, uh, we're knowing our cue, we're making music, and we're taking a bow. So those are four quick things that you can do to make your home practice successful. If you'd like to know more information, feel free to visit Hudson Piano Studio. Uh, we're on Facebook. I post regularly on there, just great pictures of the kids and what they're doing. And I also have a YouTube channel where this video is found and many others that will help you as a parent and students to grow in your development of piano study. Hope you have an awesome day and we'll see you soon. Bye.